MMOs changed a lot over the last decade. Present day MMOs are a lot different and a lot more varied than those 10 or 15 years ago. They are packed with activities and quality of life features we couldn't even dream of in the time of dial-up internet. One of these features, and the one that is most interesting to me, is accommodating people who want to play MMOs solo. Developers have noticed that many people would just like to do things alone for whatever reason, and they started implementing systems over the years that help solo players enjoy the shared world alongside everyone else. Being let loose in a completely new world on your own is a feeling very specific to MMOs and it is the magic that keeps me playing this genre. The feeling of anticipation about the adventures that await you in this new land is something truly special. Solo content in these games is fascinating to me because it seemingly goes against the name of the genre itself, the massively multiplayer part. And also because as I got older I found myself amongst these people who mostly enjoy these games alone. I wanted to explore how I got there and try to make a list of things I think make a good solo player experience in an MMO. Ultimately, I want to answer the question, is it actually worth it to play a massively multiplayer game solo? I'll illustrate this with the games I played the most over the last couple of years, mostly World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV and Elder Scrolls Online. I'll mention specific examples from Lord of the Rings Online. Even though if you are under like 90 years old you might not remember this one, but don't worry. And Path of Exile. Even though it technically isn't an MMO, playing PoE is a very similar experience to playing an MMO solo. But we'll get into this later. For me, trying out MMOs alone became a concept during the great Shadowlands exodus of disappointed WoW players. I was one of them. I played WoW non-stop when I was a teenager, from Vanilla until Lich King. I quit in Cataclysm and I didn't really touch any MMOs until Classic came out where I got sucked back in. I had fun in Classic, but I had the terrible idea of, well, I already have a subscription, might as well try out what retail is like nowadays. This was around the time of Shadowlands 9.1. For those of you who might not be familiar with what this means, they made a game that takes place in hell and in a genius move they made it feel like you are in hell IRL. So anyway, now the world was open to me. Many games are out there in the genre nowadays and I never really gave them any attention. I've played very old MMOs and then Guild Wars 1 and WoW and then nothing. After only taking these two seriously for years, now I tried a bunch of other games, big or small, and other than the wild new concept of playing for fun, I was constantly analyzing the games on the basis of how they have the solo player. I wanted to make an extensive list of the things an MMO needs to have to provide a good solo player experience. Also possibly to give some suggestions how they could improve on these. So let's get into this list. Firstly, a very important thing to keep the solo player engaged is how the world and the story is presented. It helps build an emotional connection to the game, so it's very important to get it right. It needs to be presented in a way that is easy to understand, easy to follow and easy to get into on your own time. For example, I think one of the biggest strengths of Final Fantasy XIV is how it handles its story. There's a long main story quest chain that guides you through the different zones and introduces you to the main characters of the universe. The quest information and dialogue is presented in a traditional JRPG way, meaning you only ever see one or two sentences and then you have to click to move the scene forward. This makes it digestible, you only need to pay attention to a small text at a time. Therefore, the overall story and the quests themselves are much easier to follow than something like in WoW. Here you go to an NPC, you're presented with an essay, you click accept, do the quest, go back, see another essay and quest complete. The connection to the NPC and their story is much less personal. 
in later expansions they did realize this i think and you can see them trying to implement something like the grpg dialog cards with these boxes however it's still only available for a select number of newer requests and the base system is the same still even so you can feel them having more fun lately with the writing and the quest design which is definitely good do you think i have big mom energy you know what maybe they should be having a little less fun Lord of the Rings Online is somewhere in the middle, it is very archaic in its presentation so you mostly just read long text boxes. But there is a main story you could follow alone and the dungeons in this story are also soloable. Another good example is ESO where you have most of the dialogue voice acted and it also plays out in a way that is very similar to the single player Elder Scrolls games. Here the text you see is longer but the voice acting makes it much easier to follow. Voice acting matters a lot because in a time where most people don't really read outside of the games it's unreasonable to expect them to absorb the story in a long form text format. It is very hard to be engaged with the game where all you see is long texts. But presented in bits or read out aloud there's a much higher chance someone will actually pay attention to it. Even this video for example, if I publish this as a blog post on Medium, there's a very slim chance anyone would read it from start to finish, but on YouTube there's a chance at least someone will listen to it. So story presentation is important for clarity and the understanding of the story itself. But the unique way you get to experience these stories is also a big part of the MMO solo player experience. I think having a story you could follow on your own in a world shared by others is a very very important aspect of why MMOs are able to provide such a deep level of immersion for solo players. I really do enjoy games like PoE or Guild Wars 1 or even ESO where you can just do your own exploration of the world, you do your quests for its inhabitants and you also see other adventurers doing the same. If you have a story that is engaging and you can interact with it in meaningful ways alone by meeting and seeing others on the way, it really adds to the feeling of a real lived world. To me this is similar to why a lot of freelancers are working cafes or co-working spaces. You don't need to actually interact with the people around you to not feel alone. Being in the proximity of others is enough. It enhances whatever you would be doing alone. Even so, if the quests are easy to follow and are fun to do, the story needs to be actually good. Good quests and stories make you care about what you are doing, have more fun and play longer. And in the future it could make you motivated to seek out other stuff to do. Maybe you like the world so much you decide to take the game more seriously and try out group play, do some dungeons, join a guild, do raiding. A good story really can be a gateway for people to ease them into the game. People start out doing their fun and meaningful solo adventures and in the meantime they get more familiar with the game itself. It could be really hard to design a game that caters to both solo and group players however as a well fleshed out story could make group play more bothersome. I'm focused on the solo experience but if you only think about people who play alone you can very easily inconvenience the people who just want to go go go. If skipping the story is too hard for example or if a first time story enjoyer and the person who has done it before meet someone's gonna be upset. If there's a story to follow and you and your party are not on the same part of it there will be someone who has to wait around or repeat a storyline that they've already done. This is not a big deal in a game like WoW where you can just click a box and do the quest but in a game like Final Fantasy where you have to skip through dialogue or wait for others to finish the cutscene it's more annoying. There are solutions to this like in Praetorium in Final Fantasy where they made the cutscenes unskippable for the whole group and balanced it with increased rewards so even experienced players are not too reluctant to do the dungeon. Since then by the way you can do this dungeon with NPC helpers so other people will not have to wait for you to watch the cutscene. It's a good fix but it shows that there is no definitive solution to this problem. I still think going heavier on the story is beneficial for every player even though it could result in some inconvenience during group play. The benefit of having a player base that has a more familiar connection to the world and to its lore far outweighs the downside of some repetition. Also repetition can even be a good thing for players who just love the game. I used to farm the Praetorium when it was still in the game and never really got bored of it. The second topic on my list is the social design and by that I mean the systems that allow players to play together and the reward systems to do so. 
Other things can also be a part of this, for example class design, in the sense that how classes synergize, how many abilities they have that help other players can influence interactivity in MMOs. I think this is the area that went through the biggest changes during the almost 20 years I've been playing these games. A very good example of this change is this reddit thread on the classic WoW subreddit. The person writing this post cannot comprehend why anyone would raid the 10 player version of Ulduar as it is hard but rewards suboptimal loot for its difficulty. They ask what kind of psychopath would do firefighter and orgolon for loot that is the same item level as Kratuzad, and close their post by I just can't fathom how anyone would have thought it was worth doing. And then the first comment is people actually played for fun back then. I was in a 10 player raiding guild back in the day and I do have a 10 player Orgolon kill from Retail Lich King and I did play for fun back then. But the player base clearly changed their mindset in the last 10 or 15 years. I'm not sure the players wanting more convenience or the developers implementing QOL features started this but these two concepts are definitely in an endless cycle of perpetuating each other. I think these sometimes subtle, sometimes very overt changes to the social design of MMOs are very important to look at if we want to understand why anyone would want to play solo. Most MMOs used to have servers which defined people's experience with the game. A server's community was just as important as the game itself. There were a limited number of people and guilds on that one specific server so it was very common to run into each other multiple times or even for people to have reputation, good or bad. This determined their application to a dungeon group or a guild for example. This was the basis of the social experience back then and this combined with the fact that the game's systems were designed in a way to create a need for interaction in these games, it was very easy to make friends or at least know people on your server to do stuff with. I think Vanilla WoW is a very good example of how MMO design differed 20 years ago from today and this was even more exaggerated in older MMOs like EverQuest 2. Even if you played solo that just meant without IRL friends, you still needed people in the game to progress, you needed to communicate to achieve your goals. You bumped into someone in Stranglethorn for example who was on the same quest, you teamed up to do it but you started talking, you realized you had the same other group quest you could do together. So you traveled there, did those, you kept talking, maybe you could do a dungeon together, you started looking for members in general chat etc etc. The game was designed around these interactions, there were not enough quests to level up to max alone, you either found some dungeon groups or a few people to do group quests with or you farmed for hours and hours just to be able to go to the next zone. The technical limitations of the time, the servers and the design of the leveling made it a very unique experience back then. It did feel like a world with people living in it, in a way that is much closer to a tabletop RPG than the action oriented RPG we have in modern WoW. But these technical limitations were that, a limitation, so they had to go. They limited the gameplay so they had to go eventually but that meant the good they created, namely the comprehensible sized community was also gone. Now you could play with your friends on other servers but that also meant you were constantly seeing people you've never ever seen or probably never will. In the meantime, while this was happening, the design of the games themselves started to change. People wanted different things from MMOs and developers tried to keep up as best as they could. Spamming the LFG chat was tiresome so a dungeon finder was added. You can now queue to a battleground from anywhere. There are quest markers now. Also you can now change the most optimal leveling experience for you and you get teleported there etc. No individual changes were big enough to cause the isolation of players from each other but they added up. As seen by the reddit post I mentioned, the focus changed from having fun through the process to having fun through achieving goals as efficiently as possible. I think no one really knew these smaller changes would accumulate over time to what we have now, it was not intentionally headed in this direction. But the conclusion of the changes in the player base and the game design is that nowadays I think one of the biggest problems devs face is toxicity. Nowadays you don't need to interact with people as people, you have a goal you want to achieve and you need the most efficient helpers available. The organic role playing way of meeting people in the game world is all but dead. Finding a community is an extra step now, a window you browse not a part of the world design. Other players are stats in an LFG window, an audience you want to show your amazing gear or achievements to, not necessarily fellow adventurers you want to work together with. You glance at them, they have an optimal gear score, a good raider IO history, you invite them and that's it. 
If someone makes a small mistake, someone will curse and leave immediately. Again, this is not only because of the LFG tool. In Lich King Classic, for example, they removed the automatic LFG tool, but there's still gear score and meta classes and people don't really say much in a group. The fear of making a mistake persists. These problems cannot be traced back to one source and are not caused by one single change. They added up over time and the community changed. This atmosphere of being invited to a group, no one saying anything but everyone is expected to know what they should do is very stressful for a player who so far only played solo. This can make a person close up with anxiety and never wanting to touch group play. You can watch a YouTube video for strategies, but the only way to get better is experience. However, everyone is incentivized to be as efficient as possible so they have no patience for others learning and messing up. There's a great video on this topic called Why it's rude to suck at Warcraft. I link it in the description if you want to go deeper into this problem specifically. Then just don't play in a group you could say, but there are instances where you have to. A good example of this is the story of Final Fantasy XIV, where there are certain parts of the story where you have to do it in a group. Even if you are anxious or even if you know you will mess up and everyone just wants to farm and go, you are forced to group if you want to progress the story that is otherwise a solo experience. FF people are generally good at handling this situation though, but you can still have negative experiences. And also it's just a terrible feeling to be forced to do something you don't want to do just so you can do the things you want to do. Overall, I think what makes a solo friendly social design is giving the players ways to have fun without inconveniencing others. If I join a dungeon group or a guild, leave it to be my decision. Or maybe you can just completely separate the solo questing and the group play like in ESO. Or you could increase the number of optional ways to interact with players that are just for fun, like the group dragon riding races in Dragonflight or the card game or chocobo race in Final Fantasy are good examples of what I'm thinking of. We will circle back to these later, first I want to talk about another type of fun solo players could have. Now that we establish that you need activities that do not infringe on other people and are still fun for the solo player, we need to talk about what makes this specifically fun or interesting. We'll do this through a few examples, but the basis of all of them is the same, farming. This is where I want to mention Path of Exile, because even though it's not technically an MMO, it encapsulates everything I want to say with the later examples. In PoE you farm alone, all your meaningful progress is alone. Once your build gets rolling, you can just zone out and do maps or farm bosses. In cities and hubs you see people, you can play together, trade etc. But even the point of trading is so you could achieve more and achieve it more efficiently solo. This means you have interactions with others but you can have a full experience completely alone. You could even just go solo self found and never interact with anyone. Lotro has the deed system where you just kill mobs in different zones, it's very chill and you get cool rewards like titles. You can see the world, you can gather crafting materials and maybe even get some item drops in the meantime. This worked very well in Guild Wars 1 as well where you only met people in hubs and in the outside world you could play alone or with NPC helpers. I think this level of single player satisfaction is needed in solo MMO content too. My favorite activity in Retail WoW is Transmog, Mount or Achievement Farming. I cannot explain in words how relaxing it is to log in, do my little transmog runs and roll on the lottery every week. It's basically a loot box but you also work for it. And I think that's what makes it work. If invincible drops on your 400th run, you feel like you've earned it, you've worked for it. Doing the dungeon was not hard, putting in the effort, the time and dedication, doing the dungeon 400 times, that was the hard part. The same could be said for achievements, doing Loremaster for example is not hard or farming reputation is not hard on a technical level, but it is hard to put in the hours and find all the quests and do all the dailies and the weeklies. These type of activities are the foundation of long term solo play in an MMO. If people are too anxious to interact with other people or just don't want to interact with anyone at that time, they need to be able to find meaningful progression elsewhere. I think achievements and transmog are a perfect solution to this and the games I've played are generally very good at implementing them. WoW's transmog system for example is amazing and easy to use, the achievements really good and varied and a lot of fun can be had if you go after a completionist state in the game. A thing they could improve on is I think they are afraid of people having fun or just don't have time to allocate the devs on these optional activities. Small indie company by the way. 
but there's still a lot of time getting in achievements that shouldn't be there and they really should just give us all previous expansions as raids to farm for transmogs. There's really no need to guard it for seemingly no reason, it is irrelevant content anyway for people in mythic plus and raids. Final Fantasy's transmog system feels very outdated and they would need to completely redo it to be more similar and easy to use as the one in WoW. But I understand this might be impossible due to technical limitations. You still have a lot of collectionist activities to farm in Final Fantasy and I think those are generally great. There are however other ways to have fun in these games solo that are more adjacent to other people. What I mean by this is you actually connect to the games as economy or other people in a way you do not in transmog farming. However, there's still no meaningful interaction between you and the other players. A great example of this is goat farming. You are flying around collecting herbs or farming specific mobs for a specific item. You might be farming an older dungeon for a rare drop. You don't interact with anyone during this process. You can even be watching a show on another monitor, but it is a very chill and relaxing thing to do. By the way, I always watch Twitch streams while farming. I usually watch 39 devs so most of my clips original audio is like this. I made it with my special milk. What? I said I, I made it with my special milk. Should I, do I, should I get a lawyer? After farming, you sell what you've gathered at the auction house. Still no meaningful interaction, but you might have just contributed to someone else's raid potions or someone's new crafted item. You are part of the economy, but from the outside. Another example is fishing. You can do it just to get achievements, or if you are really freaky, just for the fun of it, but you can also sell the fish and contribute to someone else's crafting. With these, you can have the number go up gameplay as your gold will constantly increase, but you don't need any specific time commitment to do it. You can just log in and fish for 10 minutes in your lunch break, you can stop at any time. But the people who play like this are still an important part of keeping an economy and the auction house healthy and functioning. Just like characters like this, I guess, according to Blizzard. There's also a different type of optional content that you do with other people, but it's not necessarily connected to the economy. These are things like the Golden Saucer games in Final Fantasy, like the Chocobo races, which are a time trial race with the Chocobos, Lord of Verminium, which is a type of RTS game you play with mini pets, the Triple Triad, which is a fast paced card game, Leap of Fate, which are jumping puzzles you play with other people, Air Force One, which is a rail shooter mini game you play alone, and many, many more. I played a lot of these games in Final Fantasy during Shadowlands as my main problem with Shadowlands was there were not many side activities to do. Everything was obligatory and forced. But in Dragonfly they added dragon riding races, optional renown farming and the trading post. These are exactly what I was thinking the game needs more of. These are optional, easy to do systems that give you cosmetic rewards, mounts, titles, etc. I especially like the trading post and I think they found the perfect balance with this one. It's casual, it's fun and it's just there if you are interested, not an added chore to the chore list. Getting the currency for it is not difficult at all and you can choose the way you'd like to earn it. It's a great system and adds a cool flavor to your off hours in the game. I think these type of activities that are solo friendly, fun for their own sake and connect you with others in a stress-free environment are very very important for solo players. Well, solo players obviously but also for more hardcore players who want to have fun outside of raiding dungeons or PvP. You need as many of these in your game as you can. It makes the player want to explore the world of the game, it makes them want to seek out adventures and I think these train players to have fun in the game, instead of always just chasing better gear and never being satisfied. But there are people whose fun is exactly that chase and the last few items on this list concern how a games designer can help someone who started as a casual solo player to become a more hardcore player. The last section was about optional fun, things that might not reward gear or anything tangible, but I think there should be solo activities that reward you actual, usable, in raids gear. A great example of this is Dragonflight's word quests, word events and word bosses. They are very easy to do, like get a few fish for the Tuscar or click a button a few times, or kill a random dragon and it's just a very basic boss fight. Kill the rare spawns and the mobs around them that bother Rathian. Step in this soup. 
These let you have decent enough gear to start heroics and maybe low mythics, so you don't feel like you're completely and utterly at zero if you decide to start doing group content. In my opinion though, they should give you even more item levels for these quests. At least people would be confident that even if they mess up sometimes, they have good gear for introductory content, so they do good DPS or healing or whatever, regardless of their performance. It is kind of hard to find a balance in this regard, because it's very easy to be bad in these introductory dungeons. In WoW, these would be low mythics, as the people who just start doing group content will definitely mess up more than players with even a little bit of experience. It's hard to cross the border over to group play, but the design of the game's systems fundamentally should allow this transition to be as smooth as possible. Maybe one way to do this is to have the option to overgear into content from solo play. Another big help would be making these intro dungeons easier. And I don't mean numerically weaker, I mean mechanically easier. I think something that scares a lot of people away from trying harder content is the lack of progressively harder fights that teach you how to do mechanics and give you confidence to tackle harder and harder challenges. For example in WoW you have the normal dungeons that are laughably easy and basically a waste of time to do. You cannot really die, there's not really any vibes, well usually. This should be the first step into group content, but the problem with them is that everything dies so fast that the bosses don't really do any mechanics. On every fight you basically just stand in one place and the boss dies. You cannot really learn or get better as nothing meaningful happens. Also they don't drop any good loot, so they are usually skipped by everyone. Heroics are the same. The only meaningful things to do are low mythics, but they require a party finder and a manual invite from someone, so these are unnecessarily stressful for someone new to the game. Maybe they won't even get invited ever because of the lack of qualifications in a raid rail score or gear. I think difficulty is not the problem, the jumps in difficulty are. Also the toxicity that comes with this, but we already talked about that. I think people like challenging content, that's why classic raiding hit so many people so hard, because people realize that nothing really is hard in classic, at least mechanically. The only thing that's hard is to put in the actual hours necessary. But for mythics there are even communities for people who are too anxious to pack these dungeons, both on EU and NA. It's definitely not a few isolated cases and I think this mental barrier could be torn down by some more gradual increase in difficulty throughout the whole gearing process from solo play to higher mythic plus, which has all its own problems. This mental barrier doesn't really exist in Final Fantasy and as far as I can tell is because the devs actually paid attention to this phenomenon. They used another method to solve this. I think it was solved or at least heavily helped by the community guidelines and to some extent the commendation system. Also content is not really time sensitive as in mythics so a few wipes are not really a big deal. People are generally nice, even in high level content, and you can be fairly sure that if you disclose that you are new and learning the fight, they will help you and be understanding. Or they even might have some macros that help with learning positioning, etc. Obviously, you cannot be wasting everyone's time indefinitely, but I found people are generally more understanding, so this easing new players into the endgame is just solved by the community and the devs who curated this community to be as it is today. In other games I'm not experiencing the end game, so I'd rather not talk about them in detail, but my point is in general that there should be a gradual increase in difficulty from introductory group content to higher level of end game activities. Very often solo players and team players are two distinct populations with no overlap. This could be changed by meaningful introductory content. This would ensure that new players who would like to transition from solo players to team players have a roadmap that guides them and can be easily followed. Another big factor I found is that in modern MMOs the monetization model needs to be a part of the onboarding of new players. The best example for me is ESO. 
You have the base edition that includes the base game and Morrowind, and it regularly goes on sale. You can easily play hundreds of hours of this, many of it solo. You can try out the game, the systems, and generally get a feel of the world around you and the community in it. It's incredibly safe and low risk and gets people in the door. The next step, you can buy the current expansion and all the previous ones in one bundle. This also goes on sale regularly and now you have more of everything. More zones to quest in, more battlegrounds, more dungeons, more side stuff and even more things to learn about the world and the systems of the game. You can also buy these expansions individually by the way. At this point you still haven't paid for a subscription but now if you want you can. You get a bunch of extra bonuses now as well and all the other DLC zones that were not included in the previous packs. Oh, and during this process you always have the opportunity to buy cosmetic stuff and XP boosts and whatnot. But again, an optional subscription is great because you don't have any stress on you to play, you don't have any time constraints. You can just play when you can. Well, if you buy 30 days of game time in Final Fantasy and you have a work emergency for example where you can't play for a week, you'll feel terrible and like you just wasted your money. I think the system in ESO is great and it kind of also gatekeeps the content so the world doesn't get overwhelming at any point. You are eased into the whole experience and it's a more guided way of engaging with the world. I feel like if you give more choice to the solo player, it gives them more of a chance to try things out and decide on their own what they want. Compare this to WoW again, where you are faced with a full price purchase and a sub before you've done anything. I understand the free trial exists, but it's very limited and there's still a big jump from that to the full priced game. It's less of a gradual easing in of the new player and more of a huge leap. I think games generally should make getting into their games as easy and as commitment free as possible. The fame trial of Final Fantasy XIV and the ESO monetization is a great example to follow. So these are the main topics I found that I think have to align for a solo player to have a good experience. I try to cover everything I can think of, but I'm still probably forgetting some things. Played a lot of MMOs solo during the last few years and I tried to gather as widely applicable things as possible, but I only used examples from games I'm the most familiar with. Not mentioned in the examples on the list, but I played Lost Ark, which was fun for the leveling part, but the monetization completely killed it for me. I played Black Desert a little bit, but same thing happened. I played Guild Wars 2, but it was just not clicking for me and I couldn't get into it at all. I played Destiny 2, but I don't really like shooting games. And also even people who play that game for 12 hours a day seem to despise it deeply, so I don't really know what's going on there honestly. And this was even before Lightfall, so I guess it's even worse now. The only big release I can think of that I haven't tried is New World and it's because of this screen specifically. Something just feels off about this system and I have this visceral reaction to just stay away from it as far as possible. I can't really explain it. I also played the Diablo 4 beta while writing this video. It tries to be somewhere in the middle between an MMO and a single player RPG, much more leaning on the MMO side than something like PoE. I did not include it in detail in this video even though it would be relevant because it somehow misses the mark for me completely. It tries to be everything but doesn't do anything well enough to be interesting for me in the long run. It feels very shallow and soulless like a Ubisoft open world game but an MMO. But it's also in beta, so who knows. Anyway, so while my examples were from limited sources, just know I have a wider scope in mind writing these. And I try to think of all the games I've experienced. So after all this, is it worth it to play an MMO solo? I would say definitely, but I hope you found your own answer during this video. I hope I succeeded in showing how modern games have gotten a lot better at accommodating players who just want to log in and chill out in a shared world but on their own. I went through all of these in detail to show how varied an experience it could be and how many meaningful activities are there in modern day MMOs. If you wanna try one out, I'd say go for it. I think we are way past the times where the concept of MMOs only being fun with friends and other people was still true. There are an increasingly greater number of people who are playing solo and I'd say this is good for the genre. 
players who have the freedom to choose how they want to play and have a chance to actually enjoy themselves in a wide variety of ways will play your game longer and give you a healthy and happy player base. Including more people in this is just a net win for everyone. After I quit Shadowlands to explore around in other games, I came back for Dragonflight and I really think they have learned a lot from the past couple of terrible expansions. I think Dragonflight works because they included things that treat people as adults who can decide which way they want to play the game. There's lots of solo stuff to do, lots of old content to do and there's always something happening in the overworld. It makes the world feel alive and thriving. They capture the feeling that is familiar but new at the same time. I feel like the game is generally headed in a great direction. As I'm writing this we are waiting for 10.0.7 and a bit later 10.1 and so far the expansion has been nothing but W's as far as I'm concerned. It feels weird to actually be genuinely excited for WoW content. I know there is a lot of negativity on Reddit and Twitter in general and I know Classic WoW is borderline unplayable right now because of bots. So Blizzard is not redeemed or anything by any means, but my specific subset of the game happens to be thriving at the moment and I'm genuinely happy about it. My other big love I found during these last few months is ESO. It's 100% what I want from an MMO at this stage in my life. I actually straight up just don't know anything about anything in the game. I don't know the systems, I don't know any builds. I play it like a single player game while others are around me and I'm perfectly content. The writing is great from what I've experienced so far, Morrowind was especially amazing. It's absolutely maximum chill questing and exploration and it's just really fun to log in for even 15 minutes to just look around. It's like a good TV adaptation of the single player games, like good fan fiction. I actually understand now why they haven't released Elder Scrolls 6 and have just been porting Skyrim to everything that has a processing unit. It must be way more profitable to just keep on releasing content for a live game and a constant income than one big game every few years. I guess it's the state of gaming right now and if you can it is what it is your way through the cash shops, I think you can have a lot of fun. My point of this video summarize wanted to be, yes you should try out MMO solo, you might just find your next favorite game in the process. There has been a few videos already on this topic in the past year or so but they were quite different and I wanted to share my experience and analysis of the whole situation. This shifting to a more balanced game design has been a really interesting phenomenon in the past decade and overall I think the genre benefited from it greatly. By the way, I've even read many studies on this topic to get a sense of what academic research on the topic is like and I gathered that they have very similar findings and suggestions to what I proposed here. The research is obviously more broad in scope and also backed by actual data, while this video is kind of just like my opinion. I wanted to mention these three specifically as they contributed some ideas to my script of this video. So shop around, try a bunch of stuff, you can have a lot of fun playing on your own nowadays and the cool thing is if you don't like the game you are trying out you can just hop on to another. There's so many high quality MMOs with a lively player base that I really think everyone can find their own place in one of them. It's genuinely very exciting to think about where MMOs are headed in the future, what will be some of the next big changes in these games and how will the players' feedback shape the future of the genre. But that's a whole different discussion for another time. Thanks for watching. Actually the video is not over yet. I've realized when I upload this, this video will be the only one on my channel and I wanted to give you an idea of what you could expect here in the future. A little treat if you will, for those of you who made it this far. This way you can make an informed decision whether you'd like to click subscribe. This channel will not be about MMOs, they might appear from time to time but it will not be the main focus. I want to make long form videos about all the types of games I like, which range from RPGs to point and click adventure games. These are my top 10 games of all time, this should give you a better concept of what I like in general. I also have ideas about what I want the next few videos to be, stuff like this. This is not a promise that this will ever happen, but again, just an idea of what you can expect here in the future. If you're interested feel free to subscribe or leave your feedback as a comment, I'm interested in what you think about the video and its topic.
anyway, I'm out for real this time. See you in the next one.